Hey folks, you may remember I got a new daily driver recently. It's a second generation Toyota Prius. I got it pretty cheap because it has a couple problems. First of all, the multifunction display is messed up. Second of all, the instrument cluster doesn't work. Or rather, the uh, gauges don't work. Some of the warning lights do. But the gauges and some of the other warning lights don't work. I did some research on this online, and the uh, cost of the repairs could be anything from a cheap DIY to several hundred dollars to replace the parts. I decided to take my chances, and I bought the car, obviously. So, let's see how that worked out. Like I mentioned in the intro, the multifunction display and the instrument cluster both have issues. In this video, we're going to address that. First, we'll start with the multifunction display. Let me show you what's wrong with it. That's a lot of sun damage. Actually, even, even with the power on, you can't read the screen. Just a tiny little bit around the outside edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to rub some of this yellowing off and see if the LCD screen below is still good. That'll tell me whether or not I just need to replace the digitizer or the digitizer and the LCD screen. So I'm going to try putting some toothpaste on a towel and see if I can rub off that oxidation on the screen. Once again, this is not a repair for the screen. This is just to see how extensive the damage is. All right, let's do this. Well, unfortunately, that didn't have any effect. I was hoping the uh, toothpaste would rub off the yellowing, you know, like it does on headlight lenses, but that didn't happen. The screen does smell minty fresh, though. That's a plus. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and buy a new digitizer and hope for the best. Wish me luck. I bought a cheap digitizer screen from eBay. It cost me less than 20 bucks. However, it will require removal and disassembly of the multifunction display unit. That, in turn, will require removing some of the dash trim. I'm not going to describe disassembling the dash in detail because, first of all, I needed to get the job done as soon as possible. This is my daily driver, so downtime needs to be kept to a minimum. Second of all, there's already an excellent video of the disassembly process on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description. I actually followed that video and it was really helpful. Unfortunately, the dash trim in my car was very brittle and shattered to pieces when I tried to remove it. If you live in a hot or sunny climate, you'll probably have this problem too. So you can expect to be buying new dash trim. I was able to order replacements from eBay, but that added another hundred bucks and change to the cost of the repair. Anyway, let's move on with the project. I was able to remove the multifunction display from the dash. Now it's time to disassemble it so I can replace the digitizer screen. The first step is to remove the plastic bezel from the unit. There are four screws that attach the plastic bezel. However, two of those screws are blocked by the mounting tabs that attach to the unit to the dash. So those mounting tabs need to be removed as well. And last but not least, there is an electrical plug that needs to be removed. With the bezel removed, the next step is to remove the metal casing from the display unit. There are a bunch of Phillips head screws that need to be removed. The casing comes off in three pieces. The metal trim for the screen, a back piece, and the mounting bracket. Now that the metal casing is removed, the next step is to disassemble the display unit. At this point, the LCD screen is mechanically detached from the rest of the unit, but the electrical connections are still attached. And unfortunately, detaching those ribbon cables requires disassembling the entire freaking unit. So let's do that. First, we can detach this electrical plug. It's easy to get to. We also need to detach this other electrical plug. 
And do we need to remove these four Phillips screws? Now we can remove this circuit board from the unit. It has a hidden electrical plug underneath, and you might have to finagle it loose. Be gentle. Okay, the next layer of the onion is this metal plate. It has four Phillips screws. Remove those and take it off. Now you can see those two ribbon cables we need to detach. Let's get the big one first. It has a metal handle that you need to flip up to release the cable. You have to push it all the way up until it starts pushing the ribbon cable out. Next we'll do the small ribbon cable. Of course it has a completely different locking mechanism to keep us on our toes. This one needs to be pried out from the side. And now we have our multifunction display in a bajillion pieces in the back of the car. Exciting. Last but not least, we need to separate the digitizer from the LCD screen. It appears to be attached with double-sided tape. I didn't want to use any chemical solvents because I was afraid of damaging the electronics. So I used a razor blade. This turned out to be quite a hassle. The double-sided tape did not want to let go, but I finally got it. And when I pried off the digitizer, I was greeted with this. Okay, so the LCD screen is junk. Wonderful. But the car needs to be drivable, so I need to put this piece of junk back in the car until I can get a replacement. I figured while I was at it, I might as well install that new digitizer. So I did that and reassembled the display unit. I also went on eBay and bought another multifunction display unit. So at this point, I have the dash torn apart, a FUBAR multifunction display, and a couple hundred bucks worth of parts on order. My hopes of a cheap, easy DIY project have been crushed. But wait, there's more. I still need to deal with the instrument cluster. I'm sure that'll be fun. Regarding the instrument cluster, I read that my symptoms could be caused by a bad capacitor on the circuit board. So I ordered one online. Actually, I had to buy a 10-pack. Anyway, let's try to replace that capacitor and see if it helps. The instrument panel is mounted into the top piece of the dash. But since I had the dash apart already, that part of the job was already done. The next step is to remove the instrument panel from the dash piece. For some reason, I failed to get any photos or video of that. But the video I mentioned earlier describes it in detail. The goal is to get the circuit board out of the instrument panel so we can replace that capacitor. To do that, we need to remove this plastic cover piece. It has four Phillips screws and you need to release all these locking tabs around the outside. And here is our circuit board. But before we remove it, we need to detach a couple ribbon cables from it. You need to carefully pry out the locking tabs on the ends of the electrical plugs. Then you can pull the ribbons out. And last but not least, there's one more electrical connection to remove. With the circuit board removed, we can get a good look at that capacitor we're going to replace. It's this guy, right here, the little silver one. You can see the number 100 printed on top. That's because it's a 100 microfarad capacitor. You may have noticed the ones I bought are 220 microfarad. I did that based on recommendations from people who know more about electronics than I do. I'm just a mechanic and a shade tree at that. Off camera, I soldered in the new capacitor. The capacitor is polar, which means it needs to be installed in a certain way. Notice how the capacitor has a black mark on it. That black mark needs to be facing the bottom of the circuit board, just like you see in this photo. With that new capacitor installed, I reassembled the instrument panel. Then I reinstalled it back into the car, along with the bad multifunction display, and hoped for the best. Alright, I got the instrument panel and the multifunction display reinstalled just to test them out. Cross your fingers. Nice! We have an instrument panel. The display still looks like crap. 
Okay, so we need a new LCD screen. But at least I have gauges. Oh, and I forgot to hook up that um, airbag on the passenger side. Whoops. Okay, so off camera, I was able to reset all the warning lights except for the tire pressure monitor. I can only assume that one or more of the tire pressure sensors is bad or missing. Not a big deal though, because I check the uh, tire pressure regularly. The important thing is, we have functional gauges. Yay! Unfortunately though, the LCD screen is toast. I'll have to replace that. Also, I'll have to replace that dash trim that disintegrated. It might take me a week or so to get these parts and have them shipped in. But for you guys, it's only going to take a few seconds. Okay, folks, it's about a week later. Actually, today's Thanksgiving Day. Anyway, I've got the uh, multifunction display from eBay hooked up. Let's test it out, see if it works. Hey, not bad. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a little bit of yellowing in the center of the screen. But still, this is much better than the old one. The important part is, now we have a functional multifunction display, and now the instrument panel is functional as well. So I'm calling this a win. I'm also going to end the video here, because uh, it's time to go do Thanksgiving stuff. Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving too, and I'll see you in the next video.